Hello. This is your adjunct instructor, Charles W. Bill Marshall, and we're going to today talk about a sample final examination with explanations of how I got there. We're doing this for CIT 170. It's a three credit hour course, database design fundamentals. In all regards, Blackboard is your official site to do all, turn in all assignments and get homework and so forth, but I also have a supplementary website at cwmclass.com. The test question is going to be create an ERD with sqldbm.com for this situation. A city recreational department manages activities with multiple sports. There are several venues in the city. Each is suitable for one or more sports. Each sport has a maximum allowable number of hours for a game or practice, a minimum number of youth that can be on a team, a maximum number of youth that can be on a team. The city manager uh, manages one or more leagues per sport. The venues are scheduled in one-hour blocks. The blocks are available from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and always start on the hour. The schedule will be for an 84-day season, 12 weeks. Each league must have at least four teams, but no more than 16 teams. Some, but not all, have, of these leagues will be co-ed. City youth can play on one or more sports, but can only play on one team per sport. For each youth registered in the city, capture their name, their home address, their gender, and their age. Record the names of each sport and the teams that play that sport. Record the youth members for each team. Record if a player was present or absent for each game or practice. Ensure no youth is scheduled to play in multiple games or practice sessions at the same time. Record the venue and time when each team is scheduled to play or practice. The database should have a way to record the opposing team or that the practice will, it was a practice and not a game. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, first we're going to identify the basic entities or tables in the question and the attributes or fields that we need to store about each entity or table. Character, define the relationships between the two, between the basic entities or tables. Define the intersection entities, the need to enforce stated needs. So we've got to identify the basic entities in the question and attributes we want to store on each one. Well, as we go back through, we see that it says each sport. So we're going to have an entity called sport, and we're going to need to record the maximum allowable number of hours, the minimum number of people on a team, and the maximum number of people on a team. And we can do that with this table or entity. So the name of the, of the table is sport. It has a primary key of sport ID, which is serial. I didn't spell it right, but uh, it's a machine-generated integer value. We're going to know the, the sport's name, a Varchar 45, the maximum number of hours that a team, that a game or a practice can last, the minimum that you can have on a team, and the maximum you can have on a team. Then we read on and we see that the city manages one or more leagues, so we're going to need to have an entity called leagues. And our league's going to look like, have, pardon me, a league ID, which is serial, um, and every league is going to be part of a sport. It may be the girls' softball team or the boys' softball team or the butchers' softball team. I mean, league. But we need to know what sport that league is part of. A league name of RHR 45, the male members only binary. Are we only going to let male members play or are we only going to let female members play? Or if it's co ed, they'd both be true. Then we get to the next entity. Venues are scheduled in one-hour blocks. So we're going to need a venue. And so we've got a venue ID. It's a serial. We've got a venue name, Varchar 45, the address of the venue, the city of the state, and the phone number, how to call that venue. We say the schedule will be an 84-day schedule, 12 weeks. I'm going to do, and it's a giveaway, that whenever somebody wants to schedule time slots, rather than trying to the easiest way to do it is to build an array or a table that has a list of all the valid time slots. So we're going to have the time slots and the time slot ID. It's a serial number, the first one. And what day number is it and what start hour is it? So, you know, time slot ID one would be day one, nine o'clock. 
and two would be day one, 10 o'clock, and so forth. East League must have at least four teams, but no more than 16 teams. So we're going to have to keep up with teams. And so we're going to have a entity or a table called team. It's going to have key of team ID. It's a serial. We're going to know the team name and league, which is going to be a foreign key back to, and we'll talk about that later. Every team is going to be part of a league. And that's how we'll be able to tell whether we've got at least four and not more than 16. City youth can play on one or more sports, but can only play on one team per sport. We've got our youth, and those are our players, and we're going to have first, middle, and last name. And notice that we'll allow nulls in, and that should be M-I-D, middle name. And we want a street address. They don't have to have a second line of street address, but we need to have a city, a state, and if they're male or female. Define a relationship between the basic entities. Well, we know that we're going to have the sport ID is going to lead down to a league. So we've got one sport can have many leagues and we're going to have one league can have many teams. Define the intersection entities required to enforce the stated needs. We said there are several venues in the city that are suitable for one or more sports. If we have a venue table and we have a sport table, we can build a intersection table, which is this venue ID, this venue sport ID. We know the, the sport and the venue. And if we make these be unique when we're put it into access to our database, then we'll know that we can't have we we be sure that we only have each venue has doesn't claim to have the same sport twice. We want to record the youth members for each team. And we can do that this way. So we've got a team members, which is going to be a team ID and a youth ID, and their position. The team from the team table and the youth ID from the youth table. And the two together will know what pos we can enter what position that they play they enter sure that no youth is scheduled to play multiple games or practices at the same time we're going to do that by youth activity we're going to have a table or an entity called youth activity and so its primary key is going to be the time slot the team and the youth and so the same youth in the same time slot in more than one it this will alert you because we know the valid time slots we know the youth and we know the teams. Record the venue and the time when each team is scheduled to play practice. Uh, the database should have a way to record the opposing team and if, or if it was just a practice. So we can do that with scheduled activities. So we have a venue and a sport and a time slot. And then we're going to keep up with, they're always going to have a team one because if it's practice, there'll only be one team. But if it's a game, We'll have a Team 2 entry. And the complete ERD is going to look like this. And so that was a short overview of what the final exam is going to look like. Going to, and you can stop here if you want to. But what's going to follow, <clears throat> pardon me, what's going to follow is uh, a video of me building that database. Just so that you can see the mechanics that I use to get it into sqldbm.com. Thank you. If you have any questions, be sure and email me at cmarshall0050 at kctcs.edu. Let's set up a time, you know, tell me when you're available, and I'll be glad to talk to you and answer any questions or try to make this clear. Okay. So we want to use sqldbm, but we know it only lets us have one project open. So if we come over here to the three dots and we want to archive this so that puts it back in archived and if we look here at the archives we can see the ones that I have but we want to create a new project and we want it to be MySQL And name it. And we want to use the crow's foot situation. 
So, now we're ready to make our tables. And so our first table is sport. And the primary key is sport ID. And we put that above the line because it's, and that's a serial. And that's the only key, so then we've got Remember, no spaces in the table name or field names. All right, so we need that to be varchar. We need it to be How long is the biggest thing? We're going to make that decimal. And then we have minimum on team. And that's small int. And maximum on team. And another small int. And we've got our first one done. So then we need to figure out what our next one that we need to do is. And so we want another and this is league. And we have a League ID, which is a serial, which is an auto-generated number that the first league we put in is one and the second one that we put in is two and so forth. And then we have a league name. Which is a varchar. And I'm just using 45 for lack of something better to do. And whether this is a binary, is it males only? And then we have female. And again, there's other ways that you could do that, but this seems to me to be as simple as any. And now we need another table, and that is venue. Oh, and we have one other thing that we need to do.
So that says that leagues are for some sport. And so you have to, you know, it's going to be a softball league or a a horseshoe league or whatever, but it's every league is for some sport. Now we've got to do another table. And it is venue. Heard me. And it's a serial, which we've talked about before. And then we're going to have a venue name. And you don't really want to use a negative sign there. You want to use an underscore if you separate. Because a minus sign has special meaning and the parsers will have problems with it. So we stay away from minus signs. So then we've got a varchar. And then we have venue city. And then venue phone. Change that to 15, and we've got that table done. Now we go to the next table, and that is schedule. And we're doing this one because when you have a schedule that you have to make sure that you don't have inter interference on, it's a whole lot easier to define a series of records for each scheduled potential. So rather than call it that, we're going to call it time slots. Because that may make more sense to people in the future. And so... And again, below the line, and we've got a day number. And that's a small int. And then we've got a start hour. Another small int. So, the first day of the season, we're going to have it be day number one, and if it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, we would have start hour 8 a.m., and we'd probably use 24-hour clock because we don't have a.m. and p.m., and that would be time slot one, and time slot two would be day one, nine, and time slot three would be day one, ten, and you would do that to the end of the day, and then you'd move on to the next one. It would be day number two. And that gives you a way to be sure that you don't have conflicts. And it's a really simple way to do it. All right. Next we need a team. So we need another And guess what? It's team ID. And that's another serial. And then we've got a league ID. 
but we have a team name and that's a varchar 45 okay and we said that this team is going to be attached to a league. So we have one league has many teams. That's what the many that's what that means. And now we need a youth table, also known as maybe as a member, but we'll say it's a youth league, so we'll say. And that's going to have a youth ID. And be a type serial. And we're going to drag this up so we got more room to work and get below the line so we're putting in data and so we've got first name and middle name and then last name and as you can see each of these is characteristics that we want to know about each use and so Sometimes we call these field names, and sometimes we call them characteristics because the fields are are staring, bleh, are storing characteristics. And we want to know their street address one, and so we want to know whether they're male or not. And uh, we haven't thought about not nulls. We probably don't want to make them key in a. Um, and we don't need them to have to key in the second address because some people don't have a second address. But we want a city and a state and we need to know their gender. So that's that one. So we're going to build some intersection tables here to make sure that we don't have duplicates. So we build another table. And this is then used by sport. And this is an intersection table. We're going to call it a venue sport ID. And that's a serial. And then we're going to and in this case we want to hold our control shift key down. Okay, so that didn't do what I wanted it to do. So delete it. And we want it to the 
and to the menu. And now we've got another one. This lets us know all the different places we can play each sport, is what this table's doing. And now we need a team members table. And we have The team ID is the primary key, and it's serial. And we have a position note. So we can record if we want to. And we're going to let that be a null if it wants to be. And then we need to bring the youth down. So we're going to bring that to here so that we've got a link. Each youth can be on many teams. And then we need a youth activity, which we're going to keep track of where all the youths are. So we bring We're going to build the key a special way, but we're going to come down here. Well, that's not what we want. So. And we come up here and we want the physical. And so we've got primary key a youth and I want another physical link And now, we want, and that one didn't take like we wanted it to. So we delete that come up here and say that we want a physical link. We want to come from the youth table. And so now we've got a unique thing that for a time slot and a team and a youth ID. This means that because youth activity is 
uh, you can't have two at the same time. This ensures that no youth can be on two teams in the, in the, team, in the same time slot. Now below the line, we're going to We're going to keep up with whether they're present or not. And that'd be a binary. They either are or they're not. And again, we need to. Let's get this up a little bit where we can have room to work. And we want to have notes about a particularly good game or had relationship issues. Or All right. So there's that. Now, what's the next one we need? We need a table called Moving that, we can control where it is. So we want another table, we want to add it here. And we're going to call it scheduled activity. And its primary key is going to be And from a venue, we've got venue. And from a time slot ID. And then for our details, we're going to have
Now, we have to have a first team, but we don't have to have a second team because this is how we keep track of who's playing where. So let's try auto arrange and see how it does. So that's what the final product looks like. And we're obviously going to want to save that. And we're going to want to add a collaborator. And like I say, normally we would add C Marshall 0050 at kctcs.edu. But since I'm already logged in as that, I have to use my private. email and I don't want to allow it to edit and so we save uh, and that's the name of that tune the last thing we would do would be take a screenshot to email it And I hope this has helped you understand how to do the final. I uh, want to assure you that I'm glad to do an MST meeting and discuss it with you. We're using concepts we've covered in the class. Uh, in total, it looks complicated, but hopefully as you look at the uh, instructions that we went through, you can see that it's not that bad. Thank you.